Hi, thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Cassandra Holloway, and you're listening to the Health Essentials Podcast brought to you by Cleveland Clinic. Today, we're broadcasting virtually as we are following the social distancing initiative that our hospital, as well as our community, has set for us. We're joined virtually by allergist David Lang. Thank you so much for being here today, Dr. Lang. Pleasure to be with you, Cassandra. Today, we're going to be talking about how to tell the difference between springtime allergies and coronavirus. But before we dive into all of that, we want to remind our listeners that this is for informational purposes only and should not replace your own doctor's advice. Mm -hmm. So it's estimated that one in six people suffer from allergic rhinitis or hay fever. And since spring is in the air and unfortunately coronavirus is, is all around us, it's likely that a lot of people are going to soon be questioning whether their symptoms are traditional allergies or if it's something more serious like coronavirus because the symptoms do tend to overlap a bit. Dr. Lang, I first want to start off by asking about the name. So we refer to it as allergic rhinitis, hay fever, seasonal or springtime allergies. Do all of these names mean the same thing? Uh, yeah, again, thank you for inviting me. And um, basically, yes, uh, they all refer to um, uh, nasal eye symptoms um, that uh, occur in association with pollen seasons. Um, the springtime, generally, it's tree pollens that are in the air. And uh, the summertime, so the spring season for Northeast Ohio would be um, uh, March, April, uh, early May. Uh, the grass season would be May and June. And then the weed season or ragweed season would be mid-August to the frost. So seasonal allergy could refer to the ragweed season, which is in the fall. Um, but uh, it's, tree, it's trees right now. And the peak of the, we have a rather uh, holiday focused specialty and that the uh, peak of the grass season is Memorial Day weekend. And the peak of the ragweed season is Labor Day weekend. Uh, but in Northeast Ohio, it's the tree pollen season, in my experience, that tends to cause the most prominent symptoms and tends to bring uh, more people into the office to see us. Gotcha. So yeah, definitely a lot of triggers, like you said, weeds, trees, mm -hmm. pollen, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk a little bit about the symptoms of allergies. Kind of what, what do people experience when they are suffering from springtime allergies? So the spring season, again, entails exposure to airborne pollens. So when individuals are outdoors, uh, particularly on warm summer breezy days, uh, they will experience um, nasal congestion, drainage, fits of sneezing, and prominent itching of the nose, eyes, and possibly also the ears, the throat, and the roof of the mouth. And um, a key a uh, clue uh, as to whether these symptoms reflect allergy or something else is that the symptoms are worse outdoors and they improve or go away when someone enters the indoor environment with the windows closed and the air conditioning on. Gotcha. So kind of being a, paying attention to kind of when you feel these symptoms is important. That's correct. So I noticed you didn't mention fever as one of the symptoms. So we never see fever as, as an, a symptom of allergies? Right. So Cassandra, you zeroed in on a very important issue, which is that um, springtime is here. And the good news is that means that warmer weather is on the way. But um, this year, the spring tree season coincides with the coronavirus pandemic. So uh, for individuals who are familiar with these symptoms from past seasons in which they've had them, uh, as I said, you know, the onset of these symptoms will entail congestion, drainage, sneezing, and itching. Um, but um, there is some overlap with uh, symptoms that may reflect the onset of a viral upper respiratory infection, including a viral illness such as um, coronavirus. However, uh, in the studies from China, more than nine to 10 people had a fever in association with the onset of coronavirus infection. Uh, three out of four uh, developed prominent fatigue. Um, and um, about 40% of individuals uh, developed gastrointestinal symptoms such as diarrhea with the onset of coronavirus infection. So uh, fever in particular doesn't occur with um, tree pollen-induced allergy symptoms. 
So if you have a fever, that can't be explained by allergy. That might be kind of your first kind of uh, cue that something different or uh, more serious might be happening? That's correct. Gotcha. Um, also, the, um, uh, there can be a cough in association with allergy, with allergy symptoms, either related to post-nasal drainage in people who have prominent nasal symptoms or related to uh, asthma in people who tend to have asthma provoked by the allergy season. Um, so cough is a symptom that may be shared uh, in terms of infection versus allergy. However, again, um, if there's a fever, it's not explained by allergy and uh, individuals should seek medical attention as appropriate. And so you mentioned this a little bit, but can you talk about just the general symptoms laid out of coronavirus, just so we have them for our listeners? Right. So coronavirus generally uh, would present with fever. Uh, more than nine in 10 patients uh, develop a prominent fever. Uh, three out of four patients have cough, and three out of four patients have prominent fatigue. Interestingly, about four out of 10 individuals will develop gastrointestinal symptoms, uh, particularly diarrhea. And uh, fever and diarrhea are not characteristic of symptoms provoked by the pollen season. By allergies, yeah, in general. That's correct. Gotcha. Okay, that's good to know. Can someone have allergies and coronavirus at the same time? Yeah, if you have uh, allergy symptoms related to the tree season, um, you can develop coronavirus infection independent of that. Uh, but again, the things to watch out for are uh, fever, prominent fever and cough. Are the big red flags again. That's correct. Cool. So if someone knows that they suffer from springtime allergies, I know I do, I know a lot of people close to me do, um, what advice or tips would you give to you know, people like me and, and other people who suffer from these springtime allergies? What advice would you give about paying attention um, in determining if it's truly allergies or if it's something more serious? So uh, with the onset of the springtime season, uh, warmer weather, um, more exposure outdoors, um, individuals who have the potential to develop these symptoms will notice that they're developing congestion, drainage, sneezing, itching. So uh, even now, prior to the season getting into full swing, it's appropriate for individuals to begin taking regular medication. Air conditioning is an effective avoidance strategy. So with the air conditioning on and the windows closed, you can cut down on the indoor pollen count by 90% or more. Um, but people generally are going to still be exposed to tree pollens and they're going to have symptoms. So it's important to begin taking regular medications. Studies show that, that you're actually better off taking, beginning to take medication early in the season before your symptoms reach a peak. So even if you're not having symptoms or you're only having mild symptoms now, it's better for you to begin taking regular medication. And the number one medication to take is an intranasal steroid. There are three intranasal steroids that are available over the counter. Uh, these are widely used. They're safe medications. The steroid content of the medicine is effective in the lining of the nose and is not absorbed into the bloodstream or into the body to a sufficient degree to cause any remarkable side effects. The only side effect you need to be aware of is it can irritate the lining of the nose so that if you develop irritation or you get a nosebleed, you should stop using it. You can minimize that by directing the spray to the side. So I usually tell people to look down, uh, look at your toes and direct the spray laterally, aiming for the top of your ear each side and two sprays in each nostril daily. And um, that's the number one medication to use. And uh, it may be that that alone is sufficient to control your symptoms. Some patients also may benefit from the use of an oral antihistamine. Uh, there are um, oral antihistamines available over the counter that are not gonna make you sleepy. So um, those are also well tolerated and effective. If symptoms are not controlled uh, with a regimen of intranasal steroids and oral antihistamine taken regularly, um, plus avoidance strategies as relevant or as feasible. Um, 
and I think uh, the lack of control would be reflected in having frequent daytime symptoms, uh, sleep disruption, uh, drowsiness during the day. Um, if your symptoms aren't well controlled, then you should seek medical attention. Absolutely. That's, that's great advice. So I want to go back quickly to the medications and about your advice to take it earlier than you anticipate even needing it. Is that because it takes a while for uh, the medicine to kind of build up in our systems to start protecting us? Well, to some extent, I think it, it's related to um, the effect of the medicine um, in preventing symptoms from becoming more serious or trying to, versus trying to reverse symptoms that have already progressed to a more serious level. Um, and uh, that it's tougher for the medicine perhaps to turn that around once symptoms have progressed. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm sure you have advice for people who have suffered from uh, seasonal allergies in the past to really just be, you know, mindful of how you feel this season compared to last season, I imagine. Yeah. And I should say in, in uh, tying this into um, a discussion you and I had a few minutes ago, Cassandra, regarding the coronavirus pandemic, uh, for people who have had these symptoms year after year after year, uh, they recognize these symptoms and, and they, um, they're aware of what the symptoms associated with the allergy season feel like. Uh, but for people who may be developing these symptoms for the first time, uh, you know, that may create more apprehension in terms of whether they may be developing the coronavirus infection. So again, uh, a major feature distinguishing coronavirus infection from seasonal allergic rhinitis or tree pollen related allergy symptoms is the onset of fever. So if you have a fever, it can't be explained by the allergy season. Gotcha. I mean, yeah. It kind of feels for the people who are developing it for the, these symptoms for the first time, kind of feels like you've got a cold, but there's a lot more itching and sneezing. And it goes on as opposed to a cold, these symptoms go on for longer than a week, 10 days. Absolutely. Yeah. So with people who are experiencing or they think they might be experiencing allergies for the first time this season, what advice do you have for them? Do they need to, and they don't have a fever, do they need to seek care with their primary care specialist or an allergist? Kind of what would be that first step if they don't have a fever and they think it might be allergies? In the current situation, I would say that, that if you're developing these symptoms for the first time, and, and another major clue is that you have the symptoms in association with being outdoors on a warm summer breezy day, and when you go in the air conditioning indoors with the windows closed, the symptoms get better remarkably or they even go away. So uh, if that's the case, then it's in your best health care interest to purchase medications over the counter intranasal steroid with or without an oral antihistamine, take that regularly. And um, when the um, coronavirus pandemic is in the rearview mirror, it would be appropriate for you to seek medical attention. That's great advice. So I wanna ask you about um, tips for allergy sufferers right now. We've kind of talked a little bit about it, but I know that like cough etiquette and sneeze etiquette is really important right now, washing your hands. And is there any other advice that you can give to allergy sufferers for kind of just managing their symptoms, especially if they do have to go out in public? Um, any just advice for them? So that's a, that's a potentially major issue more so in the context of the coronavirus pandemic, which is that there's a, there may be a social stigma, if you will, associated with people exhibiting allergy symptoms like sneezing, coughing, wiping their nose in public. People might, might shun them because they may think that, there's a, uh, that they're contagious and they may have the coronavirus infection. So uh, to avoid that, I would encourage everyone during the tree pollen season who's having symptoms um, to exhibit a social consciousness, I guess, if you will, or sensitivity and I think this year in particular, it's really important for you to take medication regularly to minimize the likelihood that you're going to exhibit these symptoms, uh, say at the supermarket. Uh, and again, um, if you tend to have symptoms during the spring season, it's important that you begin taking your medications now, even if you're having no or minimal symptoms at this time. 
Absolutely. That's great advice. And so the last thing I want to ask you about, you mentioned asthma a little bit ago. Can you talk about how asthma plays into allergies? Is that a component of it? So um, about 8% um, of the population in the United States has asthma, and the overwhelming majority of individuals with asthma exhibit um, reactions on skin testing to common inhalants. So we believe that allergy is important for not all, but um, for the majority of individuals with asthma. There are individuals who will have a worsening of their asthma symptoms during a pollen season, such as what we're entering now. So uh, as I said, for individuals who have uh, nasal eye symptoms or allergy symptoms, if you will, during the springtime. If you have asthma, it's really important for you to continue taking your medications on a regular basis and for you to um, implement avoidance measures. And the major avoidance measure this time of year is the use of air conditioning in buildings and in cars. Absolutely. And so to wrap everything up, I just want to make sure we, we, we set this out for our listeners. The main differences between seasonal allergies and coronavirus is fever, cough, and GI issues? The fever in more than nine out of 10 people. Uh, and we find that uh, at least um, in the literature and in um, initial experience uh, in Northeast Ohio with patients who develop COVID-19 infection, that um, about two out of five people will have gastrointestinal symptoms such as diarrhea that heralds the onset of this infection. Absolutely. I think that's really important to just drive that home to our listeners. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, oh. other thing, the other thing I'd like to mention is, uh, Cassandra, if I may, is that in the management of patients with these symptoms, uh, particularly when um, a combination of avoidance measures as feasible combined with regular medication use is not effective, uh, not feasible, not desirable, that uh, if symptoms are ongoing with uh, impairment of quality of life, that allergen immunotherapy is what we call it, or allergy shots, if you will, can be effective for reducing the level of symptoms and medication reliance on a long-term basis. And in properly selected patients, that continues to be an option uh, that we prescribe. Absolutely, that's great advice. Great, well, that's all the time that we have today. Thank you, Dr. Lang, for joining us. I know you shared a lot of really great information that I know our listeners will really find value in. Thank you, Cassandra. It's been a pleasure to talk with you. If to learn more about springtime allergies, visit clevelandclinic.org slash respiratory. If you want to listen to more Health Essentials podcasts featuring Cleveland Clinic experts, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts from or visit clevelandclinic.org slash HE podcast. And don't forget, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Cleveland Clinic, all one word, to stay up to date on the latest news and information about coronavirus, as well as your own health and wellness. Thanks again for listening. Take care of yourself and stay safe.